No. Hmm. Here we go again. Um. Yeah. Okay. So today, I want to. Well, I'm going to work on the other half of the core mechanic of the game. So we can run and jump for now. And the other half of the mechanic is going to be collect the gold, right? Um, there is some things I want to improve here, which is, um, yeah, I might add a little bit of, of Coyote time. Um, although I don't know, I mean, it, it plays okay, but perhaps it's because I'm used to other of my games where I have implemented that uh, and and also I'm, I'm working you know I play in a window and I don't know my reflexes are not great or whatever or there is some delay or I don't know what it is but um, I kind of fail a lot of jumps and I'm thinking maybe it could be related because I have implemented that in other games and or whatever is a little bit more difficult so i'm probably going to implement that it's not too difficult um but yeah the player has to be refined a little bit and we're going to add that so the coyote time is basically um it's about being less strict when you do collection detention when you do a jump so basically uh the player could be already starting to fall and you can still register a jump and jump all of the way. I mean, in the... Um, let's take a look at this one because it's very clear. So in, in the Haskell project, I made it super, super like... Oh, uh, okay. But let's see if we can find a place where we can try that without so many enemies trying to kill me. So, for example, here. No, it didn't work. Okay. See, uh, you can see pretty clear because of the effect of when you jump. See, so some of those jumps are happening when I'm already out of the platform. See, um, see that one. So yeah, maybe not that much uh, because, or maybe yes. I don't know. I mean, the sprites are small. Um, it's all about level design. Last day, uh, there was some, you know, the platforming engine didn't work very well with this one on the top. Uh, and I think I'm not going to bother fixing those because there are probably other corner cases. So instead, we're just going to use level design and, and avoid those situations. Um, another thing I did, um, uh, there is another fix that I implemented. Yeah, okay, so one of the things we did last day, or I did last day, it was that um, because I was looking at the Haskell project, and Haskell, the Haskell project defines a function call is going down, but it's not actually correct. And and because it's not really when it's not going down it's really when it's not going up which is different because it means that uh the gravity is going down or there is no gravity and the is going down implementation we had it was not correct there were some cases where it was not registering uh collision detection so the haskell code is correct but the name of the function is misleading i think it's wrong and you know because i was using the same name i was implementing it's going down which is you know when the gravity is bigger or equal to gravity down index then you're going down but it's not true it's also it's when it's not going up so i changed that and now it works fine um yeah i did that off camera uh unfortunately because whatever i mean it's i think it's fine uh, and then the other case is because um, in the Haskell game, the sprite, the player sprite is 24 pixels high, and in this case, it's only 16. So it makes it trickier to deal with some of those cases like that one, this platform. So 
I just move the platform a little bit higher. And the only thing we need to do is be careful with uh, the level design. Then, you know, the problem we had here that we could get in the wall and, and it would break the game. That doesn't happen anymore. Now it's fixed. Uh, and one thing, you know, what I the fix I made is that it will go over this wall here uh, and now it doesn't do it. Although we didn't see that during the video, <laughs> during the session, because I, you know, I test a little bit, but obviously this is not proper QA, just testing a little bit. Okay, so cool. So two things out of the way. Um, uh, what else? Okay, let's let's start with the um, the main core, the core, you know, the other core mechanic, which is picking up the gold. Um, so I'm not completely sure. I haven't thought how to do this because there are uh, uh, different ways of doing it. We could be placing in a different layer uh, the gold tiles. But I'm thinking that in reality, we don't have time. I don't have time. You know, the, oh, let's look at the countdown. Yeah, 26 days and seven hours. So there is not a lot of time. So I think um, if I try to keep things simpler, simple, there is a chance that that is still too complicated and I need to remove more things. So yeah. So there are two options. I would thought, you know, we could be placing the gold by hand, you know, which, where we want gold, right? And we could be putting, you know, gold, you know, here, playing in the air, whatever. And, you know, we could have more control in the level design. Uh, but then I, I'm going to keep it simpler than that. And I'm going to use a similar idea that I use in Night Night. And, you know, in Night Night, I was thinking a little bit like in Pac-Man. In Pac-Man, you have your level and, you know, there are the, the pickups are over the place, right? So it's a core mechanic. You don't need to think about, you don't need to look at the screen and see, oh, where, where is the gold? No, it's just, you know, you need, you can, you know that you need to go over all the tiles, which is what Night Night is doing. Night Night, when it runs, I mean, I keep mentioning Night Night and I don't think I have, show it for context right so just a little bit um so do i have here yeah just use this one so let's use open msx right Just as an example, because I keep mentioning this game. So I'm making kind of a clone of my own game. So, so basically you play this character and to complete the stage, you need to step on all the tiles. Uh, oh, he's playing in PAL. He's a little slow. Um, then there are different types of enemies with different patterns and basically there are like bonuses like that one because um, although there are enemies in here the main enemy in reality is a time so you need to pick up the key when you are we have you have work over all the tiles and then get to the exit you know and the stage is clear I'm going to make um, so the, the game we're working on is going to be simpler it's just you pick up all the gold and and that's it you know, I might even do a surprise saying, well done, right? And something simple. So it's just about, oh, the platform is is, a, is the same platform that I have implemented in a few games. Like you can cross the platforms going up, but you can go down. You need to find a gap uh, and, and let your, the character fall. Um, so that, makes you like because the enemies keep moving uh in, in, you know there are two difficulties here first of all you can't touch the enemies for example if we touch one of them uh we die and the time doesn't stop so it's navigating the screen avoiding the enemies and you know doing that against the, the clock so that's what it's actually doing 
Um, so what I think I'm I'm going to do in this one again because time constraints and everything is that um, we can put gold gold automatically on top of each tile that is sold uh, so solid uh, but not deadly and maybe don't do that in these uh, these tiles in these tiles because it's it's going to be like a tunnel to go to the other side of the screen which means that you know we can get up to this uh, platform here from down so yeah that's going to force you to you know um well at the moment the the spikes are not killing the player so it really doesn't matter but eventually you can get over there you can get the gold right and you can cross the spikes because this this is too much for for the jump right uh see that's why we need to call you at the time really really see it's too long the jump you can you can cross so basically you need to call it all this you know you will cross to the other side of the screen and when you get to the other side of the screen in order to collect all the gold you will have to go you know it's a nice mechanic and it's super simple to understand because you know you need to get all the all the gold and your enemy is definitely the time uh i have planned a pickup that is going to give you extra time um i also plan to have some you know some new things because i'm not going to, or maybe i i'm not going to do it. it depends on time but i would like to have doors and and then you when you get the keys the doors open so you get access to you know things like that uh which i don't know then how it's going to play with the keys if we put gold Hmm. So if we get gold over all the tiles, it's going to look a little bit messy if we also put a key, right? Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to do the manual placement of objects. Cool, let's do that. So... Mm -mm -mm. Let me think. Uh, so for the tiles, because it's an index image, we can't have transparency here. So it's going to look awful, even if I don't, I, I add a new layer. Um, but we can do that. Why not? And it's not going to be solid. So, um, all right. I mean, I was planning to do the sprites, but I'm thinking, how we do this? How do we do this? The size is actually different. I mean, uh, this is I'm going to do. It. So these pickups are going to be done with the with the uh, entity system. Um, but so basically each object is going to check collision with the player on each frame but for the goal we can't do that because there's going to be too many objects and it would be very slow so and also uh the goal i mean for the see oh this is the other map so the, the other game so i mean i'm thinking i keep clicking okay here right so i'm thinking for these objects, we can treat them as sprites. It really doesn't matter because there are not that many. But for the goal, we're going to draw them as background. And when we pick we pick up one, we erase the background. I think. Um, so I don't know, really. How do we do this? We can have a new layer and make it look awful ah, okay let's do that um so yeah let's do that and it's eight by eight so even if it doesn't look great it's not going to matter really too much and uh because 
I can put it here. So let's say that we're going to put it in there because it's not a blocking tile. So that should, it's not going to matter anyway because it's going to be in a different layer. Okay, let's go for it. Why not? Uh, so this is going to be gold. And it's going to look awful, but we don't care for now. So we can do this. Which is, I mean, this is what I was planning, but I guess, ooh, but I guess if we're going to use the doors and the keys and objects, then we can define areas and it's going to be different, right? I don't know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, let's do this, for example. Hmm. Let's do it for now. We will think about level design later, which is not how you do things. You should be planning, but cool. Um, so, um, so this is going to be processed by the map. Um, so the map layer, we add the map layer, then. We get the gold layer. I mean, it's, I was doing things, thinking about this in advance, right? So, and then gold, we extend the array using the gold layer. That should be it. So, um, no, uh, it was a stage. All right. So now we have a new layer, which is this one that is gold layer. And it's going to be zero. And because the first uh, git is one, so it's going to be 255 because it's going to be flow, I guess. Uh, oh, bum, 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 bum. And then what is called is going to be something that is not a valid. Okay, fine. Uh, we're going to do something here because we want it to be bytes. Right? And this is Python, so we don't want it to go and do something different. And this is complaining about the length of the line. Fine. Okay, so that this is going to add um, bytes at the end. So let's go to the map. So this is a current map. And let's have gold, shall we? And it's going to be, what is the size of the map? What? No. So the map is, uh, no, 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 no. Let's do it differently. Um, we don't need to use the JSON file because we have some constants here. So it's going to be map width multiplied by map A. And if I type that currently, so that's going to be the mapping tiles. And what do we need the gold? Because we need to copy. Uh, we need to copy the, the gold information because we're going to change that. So when we pick up gold, what we're going to do is we're going to erase the background and remove that from the copy. But the data we get on the map, because it's the binary we are embedding in the, in the X file, is, is read only, right? 
play ROM. Just read only memory. See, I'm saying the same thing two different ways. So we can't change that because it's read only. So, so we're going to copy, and I don't remember the other the parameters, and it's actually part of a string. There you go. So it's going to be destination, which is going to be gold, and it's not going to be constant because we're going to change it. So we're going to copy to gold. We're going to copy from current map plus map weight, map, map height, which is the map data we use for render. At the end, we got the gold layer, right? Uh, and then the size is going to be just this what I just wrote, right? So let's copy that. And that's the number of bytes. Right, okay, so that's going to be a setting up. Okay, so copy of the gold data in RAM. So we can change it, right? Um, so, so what we're going to do now? Uh, okay, so we probably need to count how much gold do we have, right? Total gold. So yeah, let's count that for. Uh, no, we can't use that. It has to be 16. I mean, we're never going to have more than 255 pieces of gold, right? So, uh, but the map size is definitely more, doesn't fit in, in a byte. And this should be an asterisk. And it's going to be the map height. And then if gold. Uh, we don't need this. Let's make a space. Thank you. So if gold I is not this, then okay. So we need to set like this for a Okay. So this is um. All right, so that's the number of gold because we're going to use that. Uh, we need to count how much gold we have. We collect, so we know when we are ready to finish the stage, right? <clears throat> so that's one thing. Uh, then we can do so map update gold. And we pass the coordinates where we're going to ask the map to the gold. Actually, I was thinking, uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, would you, uh, I think I was mentioning this the other day. Um, if we use tiles instead of uh, pixel coordinates, we can pa use a, a byte instead of uh, 16 by bits, but instead of a word. But it really doesn't matter because, you know, it's a 386, right? So if it was 8-bit, I would be more, I would probably, I, would, I wouldn't like to pass two parameters that are 16-bit because that would be like pushing too much in the st on the stack. But in here, I don't think it really matters. It's going to be fast enough. So let's implement this function. Um, so this function has to do a uh, few things, actually. So, what it has to do is we need to check if x divided by uh, map plus 
why uh, divide the map by height multiply by uh, what map height so this give us gold If this one is no, you know, not in use, then what we're going to do is set this to that value, which means that we collected the gold. And there's something missing here. Uh, but we will get back to that. Um, so we're going to need these two things because we need to erase the background. So this this uh, map of the goal has to be uh, called between so it's going to be erase the back the space so we have a clean background then it's going to be update and then we're going to run this before draw because we need to remove from the background uh is that correct no that's not going to um, yeah that's going to work because before drawing the sprites, we get the background again, so it will collect the background without the gold. So that's going to be okay. So we use the tiles. Uh, and we need to find what is the map tile for that. So, which is kind of this, right? So we do this. So we do this more or less, um, and probably we can get this in here because I mean, at the end we got to the conclusion that we ended using C99 or whatever. So, so the source is going to be I, I, that's another. Let's make it look clear instead of. It's not going to make a big difference, and it's probably the compiler is going to optimize this pretty much. So, so the destination is going to be based on x, y. Uh, but this x, y has to be converted to to map x, y. So. We're going to do that. Now X is going to be this. Yeah. Although I don't know, sometimes this, this is not that useful. I mean, if, I, if we were doing 8 bit, um, the chances that, I, you know, with, for example, set 8 bit, you run out of. Um, you run out of uh, registers very easily, so that wouldn't be that useful because it's going to be moving memory around and using local variables just in the stack, and then it's going to use uh, a ix and yx. Uh, sorry, IX and IY uh, registers are very slow and mm, it's not going to work really. Um, okay, so that's map X, map, map Y. So, destination, we need to do this tile align. So, it has to be tile align, right? So, we need to multiply that again, apply the offset and then get the tile which is going to be max x max what map y 
and yeah this looks okay and then this is okay so so this is going to get there so we don't have to click that again then it is the background and also we need to uh, total gold so when total gold is zero we're done and also we need to did we do something about this yes uh, so let's do everything in one go why not so let's do our function boy did the hard which is kind of redundant we could be doing it just like uh okay um could render should be static right because we call it in wrong game mm, yeah that's right so let's do the dirty hat here it's just an interface and why i'm doing this anyway so this is going to be hard ah, there you go so that means that huh wait a minute no we can we don't need to do that it's more like add score and then like this yeah because that's what we really want to do right um uh no uh it's just because otherwise it's going to be the same level. okay so so we update the and it's going to be dirty uh what was that so hot score and we include the score with whatever it says or oh, let's call it b for value and total gold and then we say say add score Whatever. And we need the game here. Which I don't know if it's going to be a good idea. Right. Okay, so the map tells the it's terrible, but I don't know if that should be like this. Um should it be like that? No. I think because we are going to tell how much gold it is, right? I think it's going to be sa safer if we do it in that way and simple because we don't need to do all this stuff right okay so because basically uh player race player date player draw before that we say um so if map update goal uh x y which is the coordinates of the player right do we call it X and Y? No, because that's player. Oh man. And yeah, player has his own coordinates. Mm, I hate this. It's not a good design, is it? Anyway, so the idea is um, if it's true, otherwise. It stays complete here and yeah do and in here what we do is score whatever and then uh hood score maybe i'm doing too many things at the same time now x and y the player 
What do we do with that? Should I make that available? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I mean, yeah. It's kind of... I decided to do that interface. It's okay. We can do it. It's madness in a way, but we like we like it a little bit like that, right? So when we update the player, we can say Don't do this at home. It's not worth it. It's too complicated, really. Um, you know? And then we pass something. Because the other way of doing it is... We return something here. Or the other way is making these variables available somehow. Or, or because the start X, I mean, the player need is something that is likely to happen in the map. Because I will expect us here to have an entity saying this is the player start, right? That's where we're going to start. So player controls itself, but then well, one of them has to do it. So So, it's okay. So, player update, it moves everything. And before ending, it has to call map update gold. And map update gold doesn't return anything. I need more space here, but. Okay. Because we did the ball here, right? And then, 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 and then the map should tell should tell the game what happened, and then the game would take the score. All right. Okay. I guess we can do that. So we say the score is zero and and then no in reality no because okay we can just keep it okay so we need the map we said this And there is no pending score. Uh, so we increment score. And then and we can do this in like that. It's not too bad. This is because we I'm a software engineer and actually someone was saying today in, in Master something interesting, right? Um I'm a score. 
like something like games are kind of different from the point of view of 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 software engineer, right? Because you do something that works and you don't you don't look at you don't do all the things I'm doing right now. Why I'm doing this doesn't make sense. Um Okay, so so This is awful. I don't think this is worth it. I'd rather not do this. So the player has to update the goal in the update, which kind of makes sense because if the player is not updating for whatever reason, because he's dead, we don't need to collect more gold. So I don't dislike that. Uh, so get a score we could be saying something like this um, If we get the score, then we do this. Which is not true. Spending a score, mm. yeah, I don't like it. It's terrible. Uh, what else we can do differently? So, get a score, update the score, total goal. Hey, hello, racing the bean. You got just in time to see how I'm embarrassing myself making this too complicated. Yeah, I don't like it either. I should be using a global variable and move on. Make the score available and let the map update the score. Uh, so, update map goal makes sense to have it here. Um, and then... This is terrible. Run away. Don't look at this. So update gold. I mean I like the idea. I mean update gold could be here. It kind of solves part of the problem. Like. But then we don't have access to the coordinates of the player. So update gold is better than it's done by the player, I think. So this kind of makes sense. Now, handling the score, that's a question. Um, because we need to take the score and the hood. 
Mm. Which is something like... Let's do something like... Something. Why not? We will get to something. There you go. So map is complete, it's going to tell us the map is complete. Then we take all here. And I think what we're going to do is the game has to allow us to uh, and it's going to be okay it's going to be okay at the end it's going to be but yeah, I'm kind of already in engineering this a little bit. So like this, and then put um, okay. So pa 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 pa. Then the player has access to the game. Does it? No, it's going to. So, update goal. Sorry, it's getting there. It's getting there. If update goal, then and that's it. It wasn't that bad in the end. Right. Ah, so what else I'm missing right now? I'm missing something in, meh, in the map. No, because when we did the goal, we need to say that we. Okay, so that's good. And then we added the score here, which is it was a terrible idea. Glad nobody saw that. Um, is this all completely broken? Oh, no, it's pretty good, actually. Um, the, we didn't try the Python code, so the Python code seems to be wrong. Uh, what is out? Out, out, because it has to be a list. Yeah, the voice is a uh, generator, isn't it? Yeah, that is compile now. Cool. So, but this is wrong. Uh, we knew it was wrong. Because after drawing this... So this is one layer. So we need to give another pass to so we need to go through the gold right because if there is gold we need to do the gold so it's the same thing we're doing here but we get gold and if t equals this there's nothing to draw. Otherwise, we draw the gold. We draw, we draw the gold, right? It's happy with that. And then we run it and it crashes. No, it didn't crash. And the gold is there. Nice. And it's not doing anything. Although we're stepping on the gold. And we didn't get a score or anything. And that's because we're doing it wrong. 
when we call. Okay, so how do we do this? Update call. Who's going to be? Who is going to be the one? I think it's going to be the player. So we're going to use the feet of the player. And let's look at that now. But it's I know it's wrong because Okay, so it's collecting gold, but it's not collecting gold, see, uh, it's not getting to that one, and I think it's not get, getting gold because we're using uh, the top left, well, no, we're using the feet now, but we're using the the left uh, coordinate of the the left boundary, boundary of the sprite, right? And we don't want that. We want to use... We want to use something different. Now, who is supposed to make that calculation? I think if we are telling the fit here, it should be done here. So... Well, let's do the, the center, right? So that's to be plus seven. Okay. I mean, we can't even think, imagine like ding, 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 ding. And that one is not working. So that's not quite right, isn't it? Uh, and that is because, yeah, for the collection, for the, for the collision detection, I think we set some limits. Uh, so it's not really getting close enough. That one is getting it. Why is not getting this other one? Oh, I guess because we're using we using seven. If we use eight, we should be able to get the one on the right, but not the one on the left. I am right. Mm. Wait for it. Yeah, interesting. So, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I don't want to check two points, really. Um, I guess what we could be doing is check where we're facing, right? So, well, we can do it here, plus, and then we can say, um, here is left. So we look in left, then it was six, otherwise eight, right? Okay, that's working now. So, and I guess, you know, one benefit of being able to paint now whatever we want is that I guess we could be putting one here, for example. And it shouldn't make any difference. Uh, no, it will make a difference. So it doesn't make a difference from the point of view of drawing it and some of the logic but now because it's not touching it with the head right you need to touch with your feet so i guess from the point of view of level design it doesn't make sense to put gold in there hmm? 
Yeah, but other than that, I think it's pretty much working. I mean, we don't think too much about all the level, you know, all the <laughs> interface madness I did. Yeah, it's been a long day. It's been a long week. Oh no, it's only Tuesday, right? There you go, it works fine. Let's try something different. Uh, because it depends on which way you look facing, right? So... Anyway, it's fine. Yeah, I'm thinking... Can we just fall... It's okay. I mean, it makes sense that you need to touch it, right? Cool. Cool, 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 cool. I think this is fine. Uh, let's take a look of how terrible it looks or not. Um, so... Not this one, not this one. And there's... Okay, so yeah, the hard render has to be static because it's the only one that is going to be using it. Uh, add the score is fine, and not to bother about that. Then in here we make a copy of the gold data and RAM because we need to change it. Uh, count how many pieces of gold on this map, and although we're not using that, we have to use it. Um, and then the map is going to provide interface for that. So, this is drawing the gold. Maybe we can add a comment here. For the people at home, maybe they want to know why is this... No gold. Okay, it's not gold, and we skip it. Makes sense. I guess we can also put a comment on this one, right? I guess we can. Uh, now, where are we going? Okay, here. Yeah, we don't really care about uh, we don't really care about what is the tile for gold, really. I mean, as long as it's a tile, we never we're not going to have any other type of tile in the gold layer anyway. So it's fine, and we have plenty on RAM of RAM. We don't really care too much about that anyway. So map would take gold. Um, yeah, I mean this two could be here really, and and we should be say we could be setting x and y in say the struct anyway. But it's fine. I think this is more readable. So erase the background. It is just writing one tile, right? Um, yeah, fine. And then total goal gets reduced by one. Then here we say map is complete is when the total goal is zero. We got all the gold. Um, then the player now has access to the game as well because it needs to add the score and this is where we update the goal which is fine and this is how we import the map so this is looking good so 
uh, go support to the map picks up the ball uh, support okay add go support okay so This was good, I think. Let's take a look again. Okay, so that's this is basically mostly the core mechanic of the game, which is like almost like a 2D Pac-Man. Which is what we saw in 99, it's doing the same thing. It's just that instead of changing the the color of the tiles on the floor. Ooh, that was short jump. Yeah, I can't get there. Uh, what we're doing is just collecting. Yeah, we can go back. Uh, cool. So now, another thing I want to do with the goal that I didn't think, I haven't thought how to do it, is that I wanted to make an animation with a, a little bit of bling um, but then it's not going to be really bah, 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 bah. I don't want so I, because they, I mean the, the way I have implemented the gold is super cheap like because we draw the gold once so it's background and we only need to update one tile of eight by eight when we pick up the gold uh, so that's super cheap um but then if i want to add that effect how do i add that effect because i probably don't want to add to all the all, all the gold pieces right because that's effectively redrawing all the gold pieces every frame we can probably do that, but I don't think, and I'm not sure if it's going to look nice either. So maybe I need to think about that because maybe there is a way of picking up some some pieces. How do we do that? Uh, because the way we have the layer is very quick to access one of them, but we don't know which one. So maybe it's just picking some of them having them on a list and somehow remove them from the list when you pick up the goal or something like that and apply the effect and also they need to the, i don't know it may be too much too complicated for what it's worth really because it's just going to add some effect mm. Anyway, um, so we still haven't done the entities really, but we have gold, right? And the other, because the gold was, I put it here, but I, thought, I don't think the gold, the gold was really, really, really an entity, right? Because it's not going to behave like the others, whilst the extra time, the bonuses and the pickaxe is going to be an entity we're going to place in the map in another layer uh, but we are not going to keep uh, like the, the full layer we're going to store probably the x and y coordinates and the type of entity and the map is going to spawn that in the entity system and in this case i mean all right okay we could be doing that uh, maybe not updating the gold uh, but we could make effects on the items. That would be super easy uh, because we could be redrawing them on every frame. That's fine. You're going to have only one clock and you're going to have one bonus 
so that should be fine. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, we can do it like that. I know some of the keys. Just to give it a little bit more, you know, so it looks a little bit fancier. But for now, I think the gold is fine. Besides, I don't know how it will look. I mean, randomly doing the, the effect in some of them. Could be cool, really. Maybe uh, one effect every time. Mm. I don't know. I mean, the way we're doing it is super quick. Um, I mean, we use in memory, but it's, you know, 900 something bytes, 920 bytes, it's nothing. But that's not great, really, to know in which tiles do we have that to update the sprite animation. I need to think about that. It's not too complicated. Uh, but I need to find the right way of doing it. Um, yeah, again, it could be... We, I, we, we, we could be having the list of coordinates. Uh, because when we are drawing the map, we could be collecting them. And we know that we have to going to have 200 and... Uh, 255 limit on the pieces of gold, right? Um, hey, Pan Spinning Kids. Hello again. Thank you for the rain, man. Or not, man. Thank you, you. Uh, welcome. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Mm. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but it will be nice, I think. Uh, it will, because at the moment the way it looks is kind of flat. Um, and having those things do the effect, that will be cool, I think. Yeah, we we'll see. I mean, it's kind of the same effect of the random, a random star field, right? You have a list of uh, stars. Uh, and then you draw them, right? And when you're done with one, you pick another one. Maybe we could be doing something like that, but yeah, but I think we need to have the list of coordinates beforehand. And then choose one of the list, of that list. Yeah, but the list should shrink, right? Because you could be, you know, you pick one randomly. And also it's going to look funny. It's only one piece of gold. I mean, there could be, there should be more than one doing the effect. I need to think about that. I had never done it, so I don't know how to do it. Cool. So, yeah, that was pretty much what I was planning for today. But I think uh, there's still time, like probably have like another 20 minutes uh, maybe we can work a little bit on okay so so at the moment we because we're testing we just jump into run the game uh, I mean it's going to be a pain with we testing to have the 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 menu screen, but let's have some. It's going to look nice. Let's do it. Let's do it very quickly. Just because. Why not? Okay, so first of all, we're not going to need transparent color in here. So I'm going to remove that. Just, I'm going to set up a nice, you know, even if it's just pressing a key to start, you know. As part of the stream, it's kind of at least we get the name of the game out there, right? <laughs> because I'm not mentioning the name of the game at all. 
Right, so um how do we do that? Um I think I'm going to have well, I'm going to add a couple of files here. Um I'm going to add a menu because I'm thinking that if I have time for that, I would like to support joystick. Uh, and joystick indoors is kind of tricky. Um, you need to... I mean, I can detect the joystick, but there has to be a functionality to... Um, you know, I need to... Um, what do you call? Calibrate the joystick. So I need to ask the user to say, you know, press, you know, you know, uh, up and and left and fire, down and and right and fire. So I can read some values from the USC to know what is the yeah because it's analogic, it's not digital. So uh, yeah, it's kind of tricky. So for that, I need a menu, um, and also we need to. Yeah, it is mapped into IO ports. Uh, I have actually, I was reading about that today. I mean, it's kind of simple. Uh, going back to this super useful resource, which is PCGP, the PC Game Parameters Encyclopedia. I don't know how old is that. What? Yeah, 95. There you go. I mean, that was originally from 95, but. I think some of these have been updated later on, but anyway. So yeah, it's documented here. It's not, you know, it's port 201. And it's not too complicated to read. It's difficult to... I was reading the portion of it back then on TXT files. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um. So yeah, this is like... I don't know, man. This is kind of... This is a different time. But yeah. It's not too complicated. There's an assembler here and some Pascal code. Uh, because the DOS... Uh, the machine was kind of... There was a lot of Pascal people around. So yeah. I mean, reading the joystick is not too complicated. But then... Um, doing the right thing with those values. That can be a little tricky. And you need... A joystick kind of and actually yeah I was looking let's take a look at that because it's kind of it's kind of interesting so so I found this library about this guy uh, you know this guy doing a library to Im implement the joystick support I could be using this one as well and and something that is quite interesting is that he has his content today so this was last updated in 1997 right and there are you know, it has two websites. And the first one is University of something something in Italy. I think it's the University of... Uh, University of Cafoscari in Venezia. Okay, whatever, right? And I thought, well, you know, makes sense. The website is not available, right? It's kind of old, like 97. But then there is a website in Tripod and oh look at this the website is still there which is kind of impressive and that you know this is the website of the library kind of interesting yeah welcome to the 90s there you go you have your your gif animations here background with a nice <laughs> background with a nice paper feel eh? so cool I mean to be honest I made websites like this uh, back then like in 90 I think probably 97 98 probably the first one and also at university right because I didn't have internet at home anyway cool so yeah that's this library is nice. Uh, and it supports DJ, DJ GPP as well. So I could be using this and just move on. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn and do things myself. So yeah, what is what is the fun of using a library? I mean, for the Sound Blaster, probably I'm going to use it because I don't want to, I mean, I can't do that in, in you know, how, 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 how long do we have left? 
I can do that in 26 days. 26 days and also made the game. So there's going to be a limit, but um, yeah, I found it quite interesting that the website still is there and it works. Kind of nice. Uh, no, the other way around. So this is going to be very simple from menu. Uh, do we do that or what? I remember making this be some blast to play it was a major pain, but the joystick was relatively simply simple. Yeah, I never actually. I think I had a joystick for those. Did I have a joystick for those? But I don't think I really used that in those. Uh, I think it was already in Windows and, and Linux. I don't remember. Yeah, but some blaster is kind of a pain because you need to, you know. PCM and PCM play, you need to use, uh, yeah, it's kind of not. Now I'm thinking, uh, what is the menu going to do, really? Uh, show the menu and what? Maybe I don't need the menu. Yeah, the DMA, direct memory access, yeah. Because basically you need to feed uh, the, 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 the card uh, data which is really what you do in... You can do that in modern frameworks as well. I was doing some some stuff with a fantasy console and I was implementing an emulator, a, a simulation of OPL, OPL3. And it was exactly the same. You set a callback in SDL, you know, and when the buffer is empty, you provide more data. So that's what you do with the DMA. It's just at lower level. It's kind of the same. So I'm thinking, what I'm going to do with the menu? I'm not completely sure. Uh, because how, how deep will we want to get with this? Uh, or because the menu could be running the demo, could be drawing the menu. Um, what is main doing at the moment? So it's just calling the wrong game. So. Maybe we can return something and do like uh, like run like run menu and, and then case zero we can you know run the game. Maybe, or one, I guess. Uh, no, let's do it differently. Uh, no, how do we do this? No, the DMA, well, it was difficult. It was not you. It was, it was difficult. Definitely. Okay, so... I don't know how to do this. Uh, so it's just a loop and then what? How do I do this? Because I might want to break the loop. Uh... No, I mean, it's simple. While run menu is one, run the game. Something like that. And okay, so. Um, I don't know. I mean, the menu. The menu should handle everything related to the menu. The only thing it has to return is one if we play the game or zero if it's time to exit. 
And if we need to do joystick calibration or whatever, we do it in there. And that's it. Uh, okay, so what are we doing? So, okay. menu is going to need what? It's going to need uh, PGA. We're going to need the keyboard as well. In fact, do we need the keyboard? Yeah, because we need to set the, the interval handler here, right? So the keyboard, BGA, and we need access to the data, of course. So, right. Um, so what are we going to do? Uh, all this stuff is not needed here, really because the many on the game are going to do the same when they start. So where is the screen? Wait, we sync and all black. And uh, well, we can just do more things here, right? We can say um, bleed. So we're going to need a, a red destination and it's going to be zero well we don't know yet uh, but, 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 but we don't know so this is what is the size of this please image properties so it's 160 so so 160 minus uh, minus 160 so it's going to be at 80, so 80, whatever, 100, no, too much, 90, 80, why not? And destination is going to be 160, so the size that we're bleeding, right? Uh, who was control enter? No, alt enter, yeah, there you go. Uh, and the other one is, I just forgot, 38 pixels. So, bleed. And it's going to be... Binary data... No, binary title start. And destination. Do we have that in, in the data? No, we don't have it. Uh, do we have it in the make file? Probably not. Um, yes, we probably don't have it. No, but it's probably been included already. Because we did that thing, right? That did process everything. I don't know. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. So image objects, yeah, every, any any PNG is going to be included. Uh, so we just need to uh, here like binary title, right? I mean that's cool. It's going to be quick. And then what? So. So, and we can say if keys it was esque or escape? I don't remember. Esk. Uh, then break. And then we can do while they keys they esk. We can say wait this thing because we don't want to no no that's fine that's fine yeah. okay it's no break we return zero we exiting if k keys is k um space for now i mean it's going to be super simple return one right 
So that should give us what we need. And it's complaining about things uh, because we didn't include in the in main. We need to include the menu. And yeah, we need, we have the title here already, see? Which is, it's a title. Okay, we got, get out. Okay. Uh, so there is something we need to change when we exit the game. In run game, uh, so here like is a key esk and wait okay so that will let us go to the menu and now 80 here is probably too low 60 and we need to do more things we need text and i don't remember i don't remember anything put text here you go put text uh where what are we going to put the text uh and what do we want to say uh we don't know where it's going to be Probably, I'm thinking there is something not great with this because we need the high score, and the high score is something that game knows. So, but we'll think about that later. Uh, so, so we're going to do the title screen. Um, uh, but uh, how do we say that? So add score to title screen. Well, we might do it now, but it just I, I need to remember. So so this is probably going to be maybe 120, and it's going to be press space to play, right? And we're going to center this and we're going to copy this. We're going to get the length. Get half of that. Ooh. Okay, it's fine. So it's going to be 160 minus 9.5. So it's going to be 151. Okay, so that's one thing. Then uh, here we're going to put the crates. It's going to be code, um, code, code graphics and music. Um, let's copy that again and do the same process. So 160 minus 12 is going to be 148. And it has to be, well, yeah, okay, let's do it like that. And then 48, or maybe, no, we can do it stem 50. And then I'm going to put my name. Right? Because that's me who is doing it. Uh, did I copy that? No, I didn't. Did I copy? So one hundred sixty minus eight. So one hundred and fifty two. And then. 
at the end we're going to do the copywriting so and we had the copyright sign that it was underscore right so copyright 223 right, has to be uppercase Cool. The most generic. Uh, I mean, it's not going to. It's going to change. Uh, okay. No, I have to do. It's the same. And this is going to be maybe two hundred minus eight, maybe one hundred ninety-two. So this is going to change likely because <laughs> hmm something is not quite right and I know what it is because all the calculations I have made are wrong uh, because this is so it's eight pixels right. So it's going to be 96 and this one is going to be 96 as well and then the one that is going to be different is going to be code and the other one this one so time save so 64 yeah, it makes more sense these numbers than the others, right? Um, so, time say sixteen minus this, so it's going to be eighty-four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Let's move things a little bit. So. This can say is 40, this is going to be, what, it's going to be 100 for example, and this one move it a little bit up because it was not looking good. Yeah, that's kind of okay, maybe space to play can go down a little bit, uh, so like this. Uh, we need to add something else, although for now it's going to be a placeholder, which is going to be high score 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, so, two, three, four, five, six. so 124, and it's going to be, for example, N or something like that. U? A? U. Uh, yeah, is that center? Oh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of basic, uh, but for now, I think it's okay. We can even do some, maybe some transition and we can play with the colors or something. Because the font currently, we do only one color. Uh, maybe I can do some tint, like passing a color and then we can change the color of the keys, of the keys, of the letters as on the fly. Uh, because that uh, shouldn't be too difficult, really. Um, I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible either. So, which is kind of summing up what's going on here. <laughs> it's not great, but it's not terrible. Uh, okay, a little bit like. Nice. 
Yeah, it really doesn't matter in which order we put the things because uh, there is the back buffer anyway. So yeah, and we go escape, we go back to the place. And escape again, we leave the game. That's right. And we can pick a goal already. Cool. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look too arcade to me. But, uh, I was expecting it to look a little bit more arcade. Yeah, we can do something. Um, we can do an effect when the text appears or something. The gold mine. Uh, or maybe you can do gold and a mine or something. Like that. Uh, some transition. And then do something with the press space to play. Or something with the background because it looks too, too black. I would think about that. We can do, I can do some some demo effect on background, something like that. Anyway, this is fine. Uh, yeah, the to do, shall we do it? What time is it? Do I have time to do that now? No, we're going to leave for next time. That's fun. Cool. So, yeah, good session, I think. Uh, I got uh, a couple of things done. Um, yeah, I mean, we will get used to the menu screen. It's not too bad. It's not terrible. Not great, not terrible. It's okay. Um, yeah, maybe the text, uh, we can change the colors. Um, especially because we could be uh, giving it an index to the press space to play and then change the palette to give some effect or something. All white looks a little bit flat, so having some colors for the menu that would be good um, and yeah we can collect gold now which is more than we could be doing before the session so that's great yeah okay cool so um, I'm going to leave it here uh, for the next session I'm not completely sure I mean the Coyote time I want to do it, but it's not essential. So maybe because this is going to be likely next Thursday. Um, so maybe we can start adding some enemies, I think. Uh, it is also true uh, that I need to, to solve what to do with with the spikes and what happens when you lose a life. Uh, I think um, where I'm going to respawn the player. That's a question. There is nothing at the moment that suggests anything like um, I don't know. I mean, you lose a life. I can do the animation with the sprite. So you you know, you lose a life. And then I think I'm going to, I can't, I don't know, I have no idea. Probably what it could be nice is to have uh, some tile uh, that it looks like the entry to the cave, perhaps, or, you know, something like that in background. And I think that would be nice. And we can respond in there. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. And when you respawn... Ooh, look at that! Oh, of course. Because we were in... Okay. I know what it is. It's because, yeah, we didn't erase the screen, right? That's fine. That was 
been done on the on on the main really so okay it's fixed but that one yeah classic classic mistake okay so um Yeah, so something, something new. We will do something on Thursday. Um, I think um, probably giving a stuff to the entity system and not its enemies, that's fine. But um, I probably need to solve the problem with the responding of the player. So it, I think from today to Thursday, I can probably draw two tiles. <laughs> Or a door that is going to be the entry to the mine to this to the stage that's fine and it's just responding there you lose a life um, you your player will be vulnerable for a few seconds and if you lose all the lives it's game over I think that will work just fine cool well that's all for today uh, thank you fan and spinning sorry pan fan Pan spinning kids, spinning kids for your raid. Um, see you next time. Bye now. Bye.